morning. Good morning. I hope you all enjoyed the skiing weather last week. <laughs> yeah. It was awesome. Let's go ahead and share it. Father, well, we come to you right now, Lord, for this moment. Your promise is that where two or more are gathered, there I am in the midst of them. I pray that promise comes true right now, Lord, so that your word will come forth. Your message will come forth in the hearts that need to be changed to be changed. The hearts that need to be made bolder and stronger will be made bolder and stronger. And that you will, we will find the help that we need here today. We pray these things in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right, Happy New Year. Happy, happy New, New Year. Year. I, pray, I pray that you all had a good, safe one. Uh, ah. We were super blessed. All right, then, let's go ahead and get started with the message. The very first verse I want to use today is out of the first book of John. It's chapter 4, verse 4. That's it's going to lead into the teaching. But it goes along with what we were just doing right now. First John chapter 4, verse 4. So all the way through back to the Bible. Okay. First John chapter 4, verse 4. But you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people because the Spirit, and this is what the one I, the part that I want you to hear very, very strongly. The Spirit who lives in you is greater than the Spirit who lives in the world. The Spirit who lives in you is greater than the Spirit who lives in the world. When you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you receive the, the Holy Spirit in you. And that's the Spirit He's talking about. He's in us. As born again, Bible-believing, God-fearing Christians, He's in us. And He wins the victory all the time. Not sometimes. All the time. He wins it. And greater is He who is in the world, greater is He who is in us than He who is in the world. The world is Satan. Satan is here, Satan is here, right here, right now. But greater is He who is in us than He who is in the world. Where two or more are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of you. So Jesus is here right now. God is here right now. The Holy Spirit is here right now. He's going to be in the battle that's going to happen right now. That's beginning. That started since we got up here with Greg leading us in the music. He's going to win. <coughs> Believe that. Know that. Understand that. And that leads us to the main verses of the teaching for today. Out of the book of Acts. <clears throat> Chapter 5. Out of the book of Acts, chapter 5, verses 17 to 32. What an awesome thing God does here. Acts chapter 5, beginning at verse 15. And this starts off, minus subtitle, The Apostles Meet Opposition. Okay. The high priest and his officials, who were Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But an angel of the Lord came at night, opened the gates of the jail, and brought them out. Then he told them, Go to the temple and give the people this message of life. So at daybreak the apostles entered the temple, as they were told, and immediately began teaching. When the high priest and his officials arrived, they convened the high council, the full assemblies of the elders of Israel. Then they sent for the apostles to be brought from the jail for trial. But when the temple guards went to the jail, the men were gone. So they returned to the council and reported, The jail was securely locked, with the guards standing outside. But when we opened the gates, no one was there. When the captain of the temple guard and the leading priest heard this, they were perplexed, wondering where it all would end. Then someone arrived with startling news. The men you put in jail are standing in the temple teaching the people. The captain went with the temp his temple guards and arrested the apostles, but without violence, for they were afraid the people would stone them. 
Then they brought the apostles before the high council, where the high priest confronted them. Did we tell you never again to teach in this man's name? He demanded. Instead, you have filled all Jerusalem with your teaching about him, and you want to make us responsible for his death. But Peter and the apostles replied, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead after you killed him by hanging him on a cross. Then God put him in the place of honor at his right hand as prince and savior. He did this so the people of Israel would repent of their sins and be forgiven. We are witnesses of these things. So is the Holy Spirit who is given by God to those who obey him. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm sorry. That is the only reason that I am here talking to you. Because there was a teacher at Riverside High School that disobeyed the law. And when we walked into her class, believe it or not, it was a speech class. Uh, you know, you hear me talk and you wonder. But we walk in and she prayed. She'd walk in and ask us if we've received Christ as our Savior. Then, if we joined the, the speech team, which I did, we prayed before rehearsals or practices. And she talked to us about God at Riverside High School, in the hallways, in the classrooms, in the, in the auditorium. She would talk to us about God. She said, I am going to obey God before I obey man. And I know that I'm not the only one that's born again because of her. She took the steps. She said, if they jail me, they jail me. If they fire me, they fire me. It, it, it did not matter to her because God was more important to her than man. And she was going to do his will. We have a son, uh, our middle son, Enrique. He works for a Head Start program uh, in Burnett, Texas. It's under government rule. Okay? And the Head Start, the, the oldest child he has is a, are like five-year-olds. And then they think they start at two or at three-year-olds. Okay? His employees, does he talk to them about God or not? He's got a choice to make. He loves the Lord. He's received Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. He's growing in the Lord. <clears throat> He's got a choice to make. What is he going to do? It's up to him. Okay? I don't pressure him. I don't, I don't do anything except when we talk, we, we, I just answer his question, we go on. Okay? But he's got a choice to make. Any school teachers here? You're a school teacher, right? You're a school teacher. We have t choices to make. What are we going to do? All right? It's against the law. We can get in trouble. Not only can we get in trouble because we're talking about God, but we can get in trouble because we're giving advice. And nowadays you have to be a certified counselor to give advice in schools. You can, a student can, can not go up to a teacher and say, I have this problem at home. And then the teacher say, well, this is what you should do. This is what I think you should do. Well, have you tried doing this? Because that student can turn around and say, in an angry moment, that this teacher told me to do this. And then the teacher gets attacked. Is, are you a counselor? Are you licensed? Are you uh, certified? Are you uh, 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 able to do this? Okay. That's a real possibility. But you know what? Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. Several examples in the Word of God teaches us that. Several examples in the Word of God that we can follow. Joseph. Joseph was, was a man of God. He loved the Lord. After he was taken out of the whole soul of slavery, he loved the Lord. And everything he did right was because of his love for the Lord. But he was with Egypt. And they didn't know God. They didn't love God. And he could have been killed any, any time. Potiphar could have killed him. From the lie that his wife told about him, he could have had him killed. 
But greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. And God took care of him. Yes, he got thrown in jail. But what happened to him in jail? He didn't get beat up. He didn't get raped. He didn't get attacked. He became the second in command in jail. The second in command in jail. Because he stood up for God. He didn't lose sight of God. He kept strong in the Lord. It's hard. It's hard. We all have our struggles. We all have our problems that just hurt our hearts. But if we keep our faith in God, and we keep trusting God, it's going to work. It's going to work. Uh, Jonah, he had to go to Nineveh. Okay? Nineveh, was, as it's been taught to me, was an evil, evil nation. Okay? The way they tortured and killed people they didn't like. Uh, ugly. But yes, Nineveh, uh, Jonah didn't want to go because he knew how evil they were. But he went anyway, and he could have been killed. The king could have said, you know what? You're crazy. You're this, you're that. And they could have had him killed. Forget being swallowed by the whale. He could have been killed right there. But he went. And he wasn't. Because why? Because greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. God took care of him. God took care of him. Even in Jonah's anger towards God. Being angry at God. My mom was angry at God. My mom let the words come out and said, I hate God. But yet she's a born again Christian now. And has been since 1982. God takes care of you. God is there for you. And God gives you every single thing you need to live for Him. Every single thing you need. Moses. Moses, he was raised by the Egyptians. He knew how they were. God took him away for 40 years, brought him back. And he knew. He knew that the, the Pharaoh could have had him killed at any time. Had him killed the very first time he showed his face. But he did God's will. He went and did what God told him to do. It took some convincing from God, but he did it anyway. He went and, spread, and look at what he ended up doing. Bringing out the, the slaves from Egypt. Because he obeyed God, because he trusted God, because God's promise came to pass. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. God, uh, Moses trusted that. Uh, Noah, because of Noah, mankind is still alive. He loved the Lord, and not only did he love the Lord and build the ark, but while he was doing that, he was still trying to, to lead those lost to him, to the Lord. He was still going into the city. He was still trying to convince the people to repent. When the whole world had gone bad, can you imagine the whole world that's bad? The whole world was bad. Try to, to, to imagine that, okay? Us right here being the only Christians around the whole world. The whole world is bad. Well, with him it was, what, eight people? That's it? He still trusted God because greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. And look at what Moses was able to do. Uh, Joe, uh, uh, Noah was able to do. And if you talk to God, as you read the scriptures, Noah, Moses, Joseph, Jonah, they were all people like us. They loved God. They were people like us. They loved God. There was no difference except for the time periods they lived in. They loved God. We're different in, in, in personality, but we love God. We're not the same, but we love God. So we are the same as those examples. We can do what God wants us to do in spite of the laws of our land. In spite of the laws of our man. And yes, it's becoming harder. It's becoming harder to teach the word. Even not in public schools. Anywhere, every almost not everywhere, but in a lot of places, they're trying to keep you from doing that. Okay, I never knew that till to this until I started talking to my wife about it. 
She can get in trouble for the, the daily bread that she passes out at work. Because you're, it's a work place. You're supposed to just go to work and then go home. I didn't know she could get in trouble. She could get fired. Maybe not thrown in jail, but she could get fired. Okay? Uh, and I imagine some of you have that same uh, thing. I don't know that, that your place is a work, but you can get fired. And right now is not a good time to get fired. We, we need our jobs. But understand, these people, they took a stand because they trusted God. They trusted God. They received Christ as their Savior, the, the apostles. They walked with God and they still questioned Him. And they were still undecided. Uh, Peter uh, denied God three times. Okay? But then when the Holy Spirit came in, oh, what a fire started. What a fire started. When they finally understood what living for God was all about, what they did, they started the churches. Because of them, we're here. And they were people just like you and I. They were as human as we are human. We are as human as they are human. They weren't the great, oh wow, they were just people that decided to love God. They decided to live for God. They decided, I'm going to do what God tells me to do. I, I've taught in, in private Christian schools all my li adult life. Okay? And uh, I, there was a, one class that I had. And I walk in to the class because it was the first one of the day. And there were about three or four girls just crying. Just crying and crying. And finally, when they calm down, um, you know, hey, what's wrong? What's, what's the matter? Well, a cousin of one of the girls was partying in Juarez. Okay? Uh, underage in, for the United States, but all right in Juarez. They went partying, and he got in trouble, and he got arrested. And, you know, if you know stories, if you ever heard stories, they're true. You, you don't have to do anything, and you, get, you can be, be put in jail in Juarez. You can, okay? So they're crying, and, and we've heard the, the stories about it being in jail and hottest. So she's scared for him. So we, one thing led to another, one thing led to another, the next day, the next day, and then it came up again, hey, how's your cousin doing? Well, he's all right, blah, blah, blah. Um, well, uh, the one you learned, I hope the Holy Spirit has taught you is that don't go to Juarez, a party, don't. Wait till your legal age here and do it here. Well, no, Mr. Rod, what, what's wrong with it? This is coming from the mouth of the person that was crying about their relative. What's wrong with that? Then there another girl joins in, but there's, there's nothing wrong with it. And besides, my mom lets me do it. It's okay with my mom that I go over there and, and party. And that, that has always stuck to me because... That's something we need to understand. I grew up in a house that drank. And they drank a lot. Okay? And the saying in our house was, you know, I don't want you to drink, but if you're going to drink, do it here in front of me. Alright? It sounds great. It sounds alright. And, and I'm not putting my mom down because I love her and, and I know that she did her best bringing us up. But one thing we've got to understand is even though we're allowed to do it, that doesn't mean it's right. That doesn't mean it's right. Okay? They're trying to legalize marijuana. Okay? All right, the, the big argument, medicinal purposes, I don't know anything about medicine, and, and I've never, seriously, I've never talked one-on-one -on -one to somebody who has used it for that, but you hear the reports that, yes, it helps for medicinal purposes. Praise God then. Use it for that. But they don't want to just legalize it for that. They want to legalize it for recreational use. Why? Okay? So now when they do that, is it going to be alright, okay to do it, to use it? The Bible speaks against hallucinatory uh, drugs, not drugs, but things that you put in your, in your, in your body that make you lose control. And there's only two powers in this world. It's either Satan or it's a God. 
So when you put those things in your in your body and you you start hallucinating, who's in control over you? Think about that. Who is in control over you? Because now you're not making the decisions. You, if you've seen a drunk person, it's not. It, yes, it's funny sometimes. You laugh at them, okay? But it's sad because they have no control, or very little control. Who's in control of them? It's not. Is it God? Is it our Lord? Are they listening to the Holy Spirit when they're in that state of mind? I'm not judging them, but I, I, we need to understand just because the law allows it, it doesn't mean it's right. Okay? Um, my children, my nephew, you young ones right there, you can have children. <coughs> Gina's going to have children. Okay? The laws are getting harder for us to bring up our children in the Lord or in the ways of the Lord. I hear the young ones talking about being afraid to spank their children. We got to go hide over here. We got to take them over there so nobody will see. And then we hope our children don't say anything. That's not of God. That's the law of the land, and that's the devil. The, one of the best ways for the devil to win is to destroy family values. Okay? We got to be strong. I can. People, you young ones can say, well, it's easy for you. Your children are all brought up and grown up already. But we did. We spent. We spent. And we spent. Okay? If you know my children, I spent some more. All right? But, even in spite of, how do I say that? They love God. They love God and they're trying their best to live for God. And that's what God is going to judge. Okay? My wife and I have been complimented about how, how good our children are. And we know it was God. We know it was God. Okay? And, and that's the proof of God's word working. Because the children learn to respect others. The children learn to be, have integrity. The children learn to work for a living. The children realize that I've got to, to be a part of, I've got to be useful. Okay? But the world is taking that away. The world is taking that away. And any child, 17 and younger, can say, my dad hit me. My mom hit me. And they get the children taken away and maybe put in jail. I don't know if that's automatic or not, but they get the children taken away. And that's all it takes is those words. No proof, just saying it. So we need to pray for our young ones. We need to pray for our teenagers. We need to pray for the ones that are about to get married. Because when they have children, I pray, we need to pray that they, they still have it in them to raise their children up in the Lord in spite of the fear that's there, and that they realize, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. And you know what? The disciples got beaten up. The disciples got jailed. But they still lived for God. What did they do when they were in jail? What did Paul do? What did Peter do? What did they do? They, they were singing in jail. They were teaching the, the, the jailers about God. Even one said, you know what? I want to receive Christ as my Savior while, while he, was the, uh, he was the jailer. They, they didn't give up on God in the bad times. They didn't give up on God in the hard times. They believed that greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. And this is where God wants me right now then this is where I'm going to teach the word right now. They were put in jail, and what happens? God opens up the doors, lets them out, and what did, what's the first thing they go do? They go teach about God. And understand, people are going to get mad at us. People are going to get, get angry. They're going to get upset because you're teaching about God. That's all right. That's all right. I, I've always, even before I was a Christian, I've always been afraid of jails. If ever a policeman stopped me, it was yes sir, no sir, okay sir, whatever, you know. 
It was always politeness. It was always courteous. No matter how mad I was. It was always polite. I didn't want them to have any excuse whatsoever to take me to jail. I still fear them. I don't know what caused it. I, I, maybe I see too many movies or heard too many stories or I had too many friends that went to jail. I don't know. But I fear them. I really fear them. I don't ever want to get thrown in there. But if that's what God has in store for me, I pray that I don't lose sight and I don't lose sight of that promise. And I continue trusting Him and living for Him. Bad things are going to happen in your lives. You're going to go through hard times. Hard times from losing loved ones. From seeing loved ones suffering of, of cancer. AIDS. Uh, those things are, are very hard to cure. Um, but you'll see them suffer. The, the soldiers that are coming back and that are hurting. You're, you're going to see that. But understand and believe and trust with all your heart that greater is He that is in me than he who is in this world. And you will have the victory. You will have the victory. Because He always wins. God will always, always win. I'm going to leave with these, uh, end with these last two verses. It's what the Holy Spirit does. If you'll open your Bibles up to Acts 4. Verse 31 and Acts 1, verse 8. Acts 4, 31. After this prayer, the meeting place shook, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preach the word of God with boldness. The Holy Spirit will give you that boldness that you need. But not only the boldness, He'll give you the word. He'll give you everything you need. But that's what the Holy Spirit is in us for. That's one of the reasons He's in, in us. Then uh, Acts 1.8. Uh, Acts 1.8. Okay. Uh, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. But you will receive power. The Holy Spirit will give you the power, will give you that boldness. You know, so, being working with children... You always hear, I'm shy, I'm shy. Well, Timothy shows us and teaches us, shyness is not a guide. For I've not given you the spirit of, uh, for, uh, I've not given you the spirit of fear or of timidity, but I've given you the, the spirit of love, power, and of a sound mind. Timidity is, oh, I'm so shy. Oh, I'm too shy. Oh, I'm, uh, that's not me. <coughs> well, if you're a Christian, that you don't have shyness. Yes, you have a little bit of it, but you go do it anyway. You go do it anyway because that's you realize that's not okay. So I'm going to do what God wants me to do. So understand, the Holy Spirit will give you the power and will give you the boldness and everything else that you need to spread His Word, just like He did to the apostles. Trust that and believe that. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you so much for your word. We praise your name that it teaches us and gives us everything we need to live the life you've called us to live. Father, I pray now that you'd help us this week to do that. And I pray, Lord, that each one of us would find the time to talk to you every day, Lord. Every day that we find some time throughout the day to talk to you. So that, Lord, our lives will be easier. Father, help us and keep us safe in everything we do. Be with those that are traveling back home, back to their places, after being here for the holidays. And we pray these things in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Now I'm going to end with a song. You're gonna
Bring your tired and bring your shame Bring your guilt and bring your pain Don't you know that's not your name You will always be much more to me And every day I wrestle with the voices that keep telling me I'm not right But that's all 